Hello, Mr. Officer, you come in peace, or will you set a trap that you might decrease my liberty and freedom, or make me deceased as you talk to the voices in your earpiece? I am Wayne Bewley, the Interim Chief of Police for the Little Rock Police Department. This is a critical incident video designed to reflect transparency to the citizens of Little Rock in line with the pillars outlined in 21st century policing. The release of the critical incident video is new to the Little Rock Police Department, but not new in the police profession. Critical incident videos are utilized around the country by other police agencies. The purpose of this video is to provide information regarding the officer-involved shooting that occurred on Friday, February 22, 2019 in the city of Little Rock at 12th and Rodney Parham. In this video, we will provide a narration of the incident, including video and police radio traffic capturing the incident. Please keep in mind that the purpose of this video is to provide transparency to the citizens of Little Rock and to provide a better understanding of what occurred based on the information that we have at this time. This is in no way meant to prematurely draw any conclusions to the outcome of the criminal investigation or the separate administrative investigation. Please understand that the video and the information that you are about to see is disturbing. When police officers use force, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. There may also be strong language in this video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. The incident began at approximately 11.04 a.m. when a stolen black Nissan Altima bearing Arkansas license 513WXF drove westbound on 12th Street past a portable stationary license plate reader, what we will call LPR. When the stolen Nissan Altima passed this LPR, a notification was sent via computer to a detective who was working in an office. The detective then verified, confirmed this vehicle was an active stolen vehicle. This is the video of the stolen Nissan Altima as it travels westbound on 12th Street through the intersection of 12th and Peyton. The detective then turned to the city camera system and began monitoring cameras in the area. The detective first observed the stolen Nissan Altima on camera as it continues westbound on 12th Street approaching Fair Park. The detective observed the stolen Nissan Altima continue westbound towards University. This is the video from the camera at 12th and Fair Park. At approximately 11.05 a.m., the detective, via police radio, requested assistance from any officer in the area of 12th and University regarding the stolen vehicle. Officer Zebulon Tyler responded and was directed by the detective to switch to a police common channel to coordinate this incident. This radio channel, which is utilized to reduce traffic on the main dispatch channel, is not recorded. This is the audio of the initial radio traffic. Ocean 52 to any northwest in around 12th and University. I may be down there that way here in just a second. What you got? Go to pick on Once on the police common channel, Officer Starks, as well as other officers, indicated they were responding to the area. 
Again, this is not a recorded radio channel. The detective then begins monitoring the camera at 12th and University. At approximately 11.06 a.m., the stolen Nissan Altima is observed as it approaches the intersection and stops at the traffic signal. The vehicle is then observed continuing westbound on 12th Street, crossing University. This is a video from the camera at 12th and University. The detective then begins to monitor the camera located at 12th and Rodney Parham. The stolen Nissan Altima is observed traveling westbound. At approximately 11.08 a.m., the detective observes the vehicle turn into the parking lot at 7305 Canis Road. This is a video from the camera located at 12th and Rodney Parham. Please note that much of this video is obstructed due to the pole the camera is mounted on. Officer Starks, who was being directed via radio traffic from the detective on a police common radio channel, was the first officer to arrive at 7305 Canis Road, arriving at approximately 11.09 a.m. The following is the dash cam video from Officer Starks' patrol unit. Please note that the first of the video shows Officer Starks responding and has no sound. This is a pre-recorded video that is captured upon activation of the dash cam system. Pre-recorded video is normally a 45 second to a one minute video. This feature is designed to capture video prior to the time the dash cam is activated and to capture video of incidents that occur suddenly. As Officer Starks pulls up to and stops in front of the stolen Nissan Altima, he turns on the blue lights in his patrol unit. This activates his dash cam and at that point audio can be heard. Hands, hands. Send me some units, I got them at gunpoint. Roll your window down. Roll the window down. I mean, Alright, get out. Get out. Get out. I'll explain it to you in a second. Get out. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Dude, get out of the car. Get out of the car. He's refusing to get out of the car. Dude, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car, dude. Get in the car! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! I need you to see anything. Don't move! Don't move! Stay where you're at. Okay. Stay where you're at. Hey, can I get out? He's driving. Can I get out? I need units. I need units. Hey! Hush! Hey, can I jump out? Get out! Get out! Get out! What are you people? Come over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get on the ground for me. He has a 
Hey, 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 she said he's got a gun. The pastor is telling me he's still got a gun. He just picked me up. Okay. I swear to God. I'm putting you in cuffs, right? Okay. That's fine. Stay back. Stay back. Information. The driver has been struck. He still has a gun. I've, I've fired multiple times. Get back. I know. I know. We're about to. Hey, if you can keep them back for me, we got a lot of people coming. You hit my knee. Sir. My knee. I just don't. Do you have anything on you, huh? No, sir. Okay, stand up for me. Can you get my jacket? He's driver's seat. I, I shot. Hi. I shot. Passenger, get in. He hit me. He hit me. Yeah, he, he, he hit me. He hit I, shot, I shot him multiple times. I'm okay. I'm okay. You good? I think he just sprained it or something. I was over at the line. I saw it, man. You know, you take a seat, bud. The next video that you will see is the dash cam video from the backup unit, Officer Michael Simpson. on his left hand right now. He, he might be 10-7 right now, but we need to pull him out of the car for Mims. You got him covered? I got him covered. Hey, you got me covered? I, I, I got everyone covered. Yeah. But I don't know where his gun's at, but he has a gun. The next two videos that you will see are from a business surveillance camera located at 7305 Canis Road.
The next video is from a nearby private business. The last video is from the Big Red, located at 7200 West 12th Street. As a result of this incident, Officer Starks received an injury to his right leg. The operator of the stolen Nissan Altima was identified as Bradley Blackshire, black male, date of birth, October 20th, 1988. Mr. Blackshire died at the scene. The passenger in the stolen Nissan Altima was identified as Desiree Clark, white female, date of birth, March 29th, 1988. The video evidence contained in this critical incident release has been viewed by the family of Bradley Blackshower and their attorney. It has also been viewed by the attorney representing Officer Starks. These viewings occurred prior to the release of this video. I feel that it is important to again describe the process that occurs when Little Rock police officers are involved in deadly force incidents. When this incident occurred, two investigations were initiated, a criminal investigation and a separate administrative investigation. At this point, the major crime section of the Little Rock Police Department has completed the initial criminal investigation into this incident. We still await final investigative reports from the Arkansas State Crime Lab and final report from the Medical Examiner's Office, as well as any additional relevant information that may come forward. 
The file has been submitted to the Pulaski County Prosecuting Attorney's Office and we will supplement the remaining reports and or additional information as it is received. Please note these reports may take several months to complete and for us to receive. The administrative investigation, which is conducted by the professional standards section of the Little Rock Police Department, is continuing. The purpose of this investigation is to determine if the actions of the officer were in compliance with the policies of the Little Rock Police Department. Once this investigation is complete, the file will be forwarded to the Chief of Police who is responsible for the final decision. Once the Chief of Police makes the final decision, if the family of Bradley Blackshire does not agree with this decision, they have the right to appeal this decision to the Civil Service Commission. Lastly, to the citizens of Little Rock and to the members of the Little Rock Police Department, I ask for your continued patience as this investigation continues and to allow due process to work for all parties involved.